the opening demo, the opening sound, the opening song of Skate or Die is so memorable. It's iconic. It is one of the um, maybe best known songs. Uh, of course, it's, uh, I believe it's a uh, Ron Hubbard special. And the thing about it is, is that uh, depending on where you grew up, uh, it sounds different, whether you're listening to it on NTSC or whether you're listening to it on PAL. So first of all, let's see how this one loads up. Uh, the uh, NTSC version is uh, uh, in a slower, slightly slower, so that also means it's in a slightly lower register. Let's take a look and hear what we get here. Well, that's not the Skater Die song I was waiting for. There we go. This is the way I remember it. Now I'm shouting because it's so loud in my ears. I cranked all the sound way up. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, Skate or Die. And the reason that I was in the mood to play uh, Skate or Die. Yeah, 745 is past 720. Oh, does this make me miss my 720? Absolutely. Uh, if I have two regrets... Of any arcade machines I got rid of. It's Karate Champ and 720. I will never get another deal like I got on that 720. Um, I think I paid 400 maybe 500 for my 720 cabinet, which was immaculate. I mean, it was completely restored. And um, ones in that shape now are going for 2500 to 3000 which I'm, I'm not in. I don't live in that ballpark, so... Uh, it's a bummer. I wish I should have had the foresight to keep that thing. Um, but the, uh, reason that I wanted to play skate or die today, and I haven't played this in a long time is because, uh, the new Tony Hawk, uh, what is the name of that documentary? Let me find the name of it here real quick. That song gets stuck in your head. That's a that's a sign of a good uh, video game theme when it gets stuck in your head, you know. Um, let's see. Tony Hawk, Until the Wheels Fall Off, which debuted yesterday, I believe, on HBO Max. Uh, I watched it this morning. It's a really good documentary. Uh, I, I think Tony Hawk, obviously, number one, most famous, uh, most successful, most famous skateboarder, professional skateboarder of all time. Uh, just no question about that. And the, uh, thing about this documentary for me is there are so many skaters that were less, uh, famous, uh, that had fewer achievements, however you want to put it, that have documentaries, uh, and of course, all the guys that had some sort of tragedy in their life, uh, all had documentaries about them. There's a documentary about, um, uh, Gator, 
who um, uh, Mark Gator Rogowski, who um, uh, basically uh, murdered his girlfriend <laughs> and buried her out in the middle of the desert. Uh, and uh, I believe he's still in prison. Uh, there's a documentary about Christian Hosoy, who uh, got deep into uh, meth, basically, and and did a stint in prison. So a lot of you know all these guys that had the the sad downturn type stories, but the, with the redemption ending, all have documentaries. But Tony Hawk, uh, you know, he had some uh, uh, marriage issues and stuff, but. Uh, uh, that doesn't really, I mean, that's not the same as, uh, murdering your girlfriend and, and burying her in the desert. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, yeah, there are just so many good skateboarding documentaries out there and I've, I've watched most of them. Uh, I've, I've watched basically all the ones I've ever found and, and there's not, uh, um, just those, uh, that, that focus on a person, but there's also ones that focus on, uh the uh, uh groups like there's the uh, dogtown one there's the bones brigade one which i would say is probably the best one uh up until i saw this one i'm trying to decide what event i want to go do here i think i'm gonna go joust first boop, boop. which i think is a maybe a opposite side uh disc uh, maybe I was supposed to flip the disc or something because the, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Hang on here. Attach disc image. Uh, you'd think it would prompt you to flip it over, but it did not. Uh, yep. Lords of Dogtown is good. And then there's the, um, uh, uh, I think, yeah, yeah. Lords of Dogtown was the, uh, uh, kind of like the fictionalized, not fictionalized, but the, uh, movie version of, um, uh, Z, what was it called? Uh, Z town, whatever, uh, or the Z boys, Dogtown and the Z boys, whatever it was. But, um, uh, they're all good. I just, I really enjoy all those, uh, skateboard documentaries. Rodney Mullen has a great, um, documentary. Rodney Mullen, uh, did a Ted talk. Uh, so there's, uh, uh, let's see, is this still loading? Yeah, it's still loading. Still doing something. That's one thing about the Commodore. You always got to uh, check the drive light to make sure it's doing something. Unfortunately, uh, these, uh, uh, emulators have a virtual <laughs> drive light. Uh, but anyway, this new Tony Hawk documentary, let's see, who are we going to, there's Poser Pete. Usually I'm not very good at these things, so I'll probably go with Poser Pete, but we also have Agro Eddie. No prob, I know my way around a pool, do you? Better know your stuff before you take on me, I'm Agro Eddie. And then, of course, Lester, skate or die. And Lester's uh, uncle is, uh, I don't know if it's his uncle or, Ro or uh, dad, Rodney is the guy that runs the uh, skate shop. We will go after Poser Pete here. We'll punch in. There's Poser Pete. The easiest way to do this uh, event to follow him in like that. And then boom. I think you get five passes. And then it changes hands. And now he's got the old joust. Oh, boy. more to safety there we go almost got it see the thing is if you're behind him you'll never catch him so you gotta kinda oh boy now I'm in trouble and I'll poser Pete track me down there uh, I never heard of this being a real thing uh, and the only time that I've ever seen any sort of jousting or combat on a skateboard is in uh, the movie uh, Thrashing, in which uh, Corey Webster goes up against Hook, the leader of the Daggers, and they have the uh, 
their, their battle to settle their differences. Oh, don't do that. All right, almost. Come on, Poser Pete. Oh, no, Poser Pete. Now I just lost the joust. But that's all right. We're going to stay ahead of him. Oh no, Poser Pete got me again. Poser Pete! Alright. Let's wait until he goes. We'll drop in behind him here and then we'll try to. Oh! Almost got him! And. Come on. Anyway, the uh, uh, Tony Hawk documentary was, was pretty good. It covered some of the same material that's in the Bones Brigade documentary, just because Tony Hawk was obviously in the Bones Brigade. And, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of the same... Don't pause it there. Come on. Hold still, pose repeat. I got something for you. Um, you know, I mean, the part of the Bones Brigade story, to a certain extent, is... I mean, the early years is a Tony Hawk story, you know, about how he... Became a uh, up and uh, up and coming skater. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Tony Hawk, you know, was uh, basically inventing this new style of skateboarding. So he was he was the guy that was in between uh, the the seventies guys that were all surf uh, inspired. You know, that were basically doing surfboard maneuvers just on a skateboard on wheels and uh so when they were they came in to ride pools they were just riding pools they would go around go around you know and tony hawk started doing all these uh, finger flipping tricks and flipping the board and, and stuff like that and uh, they hated him uh he talks about that being in a uh i'm gonna try one more round here let's go for a hard guy maybe that was a problem the guy i picked was too easy that was probably it And uh, so he talks about this contest, which is a, a famous contest where he, uh, oh no, don't get away from me, oh no, no, it turns out the hard guy's hard, uh, where the uh, other contestants were literally, uh, uh, the crowd and contestants were throwing beer cans into the pool where he was skating, and he uh, crashed at the bottom of the pool and found a... When he looked, there was a beer can there. <laughs> and, uh, so... Oh, yeah! Win for me! See, that was the problem. I was playing a guy that was too easy. I had to get up here to, uh... Lester. Alright, now we've got some skate flow going on. Uh-oh. That didn't work. I tried to trick him. I tried to trick him, and I got tricked myself. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I mean, and it, it was the thing about uh, uh, Tony Hawk in his early days that they really dwell on is that he, it wasn't just like the crowd giving him the business. It was like the other skaters giving him the business. Uh, you know, the guys that, that were uh, his, his competition, you know, skateboarding has always been kind of, uh, uh, one of those things where the competitors would root each other on and, and, uh, you know, uh, root for one another for success and, uh, not for Tony Hawk. There was a lot of rooting against Tony Hawk, but the problem was he started winning these competitions. So they all love to hate him, but, uh, you know. It's too bad for them because he was winning. And then, uh, you know, when he became number one, not only, he was the best skater in the world uh, and uh, had no friends. <laughs> I think Rodney Mullen says in the uh, documentary, when you finally get to the top of the mountain, all you find is lightning. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. So, uh, yeah, it was a really good 
good documentary. I really enjoyed it. I think the uh, saddest part of the documentary is it's literally tiled, uh, titled Until the Wheels Fall Off. And at the end of it, Tony Hawk says, I'm going to keep skating forever as long as my body could take it. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Tony Hawk uh, recently broke his leg. So between the time that this was filmed and the time it was released, but in that window, he broke his leg. I guess he showed up at uh, one of the recent award ceremonies with a cane, but he wasn't sure he was going to be able to walk at all. In fact, the doctor said that he might not ever walk again uh, or, or walk, you know, uh, without uh, a cane or without a limp or something like that. So uh, the good news is uh, he, it seems like he's up and about, but kind of the whole point of the documentary is like, I'm going to skate forever. I'm going to skate into the sunset. And, uh, now I don't think that's going to be his legacy. I will tell you an interesting story from the documentary. Tony Hawk talks about how, when he was younger, he was selling so many skateboards a, a month and making this money. And he bought a house basically as an investment uh, for tax purposes and some other things like that. So he was making money. I don't think he was a millionaire. I don't know that he was a multimillionaire as a kid, but he had money. And so, of course, then, uh, you know, we have uh, what they call uh, the skateboarding uh, world calls the, the dark years, which was when uh, ramp skateboarding dried up in the late 80s. Uh, early nineties until basically, basically the X games. So that, whatever that gap is, you know, uh, five, six years, something like that. And, uh, so Tony Hawk goes back to, uh, let's see. I should be on the left. And I like to skate, I believe goofy foot. So let's see. We got left, right. And then up speeds up. And I should be able to, Flip around, and you want to flip around so that you can throw some punches and kicks. Oh, get away from me, Lester. I don't remember the uh, layout. I'm going slow on purpose until I... Oh, that's as fast as I can go. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. No matter which side I get on. Oh, we... Oh, we both ran into the fence. Okay, button and up does that little 180 move. Button by itself, is that what attacks? I guess I need to figure out how to... Oh no, I hit a wall. Come on. Let's go catch up. Boom! Oh no. Oh, look at that. Uh-oh through the fence there. I got, I got sliced and diced. Oh. Okay, so the button when I'm close to him, I'm throwing some shots there. I got some... Boom! Come here, Lester. Alright, what's my score? Why is my score so much lower than his score? going right at him. Uh, so anyway, about this Tony Hawk story. If you're going to punch me, you're going to have to catch me. Baby. Oh, no, he's going to catch me because I just ran into a conveniently located... Boom! Oh, no. Boom, boom, boom. Get off me, Lester. Oh, and the button in the way. Oh, jump, jump. Oh, hold on, hold Button in the way kicks and button in towards punches. Now I got it. <laughs> Pretty hard to kick somebody while skateboarding, I would guess. Now I know that fence is coming up. Oh, no. I, uh, I thought I made it through the... Uh, so anyway, uh, 
Tony Hawk talks a little bit in the documentary about, you know, the, the dark years. The years where he's oh, right through the fence again. <laughs> where he wasn't going to be paid. And uh, then he talks about when uh, basically Activision calls him to make uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. And he's like, well, who, you know, who wants to play this game? He basically just says he thinks only skateboarders will want to play it. It won't have a, a mass appeal. And uh, so they released the first one. They released the second one. And he said when they released the fourth one, I think it was the third or fourth one, but all the other ones were still in the top ten bestseller list. So <laughs> the, the top ten video game bestselling list were all the other Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. And... Um, uh, so Tony Hawk had a meeting with their investors, uh, with Activision, and they explained this to him. And he said, I don't understand what this means. And they said, here's what it means. And they handed him a check for four and a half million dollars. And then they gave him a $20 million advance for the next game. <laughs> so uh, good on Tony Hawk. But uh, yeah, that, that definitely... Uh, uh, I know that there was money in, in uh, competitions. There was money in uh, uh, some of the, you know, board sales was a big thing. Merchandise. Merchandise and board sales were, were big things. Um, but uh, it sounds like video games weren't too bad. <laughs> oh, I was trying to do a trick. But I got tricked. Watch this. Oh, I got cleared that hole. should just stop kicking me. Oh, not too soon. Now, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> Catch me now. Catch me now, Lester. I hope I get a zillion points by... Oh, no, 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 no. Ah. I gotta remember, right after you come around the brick building, go to the middle. See where I am. Where am I? Oh, there I am. oh no! Oh no! I fell down a stove pipe. Boy, he's definitely winning. I'm gonna jump on this car. Oh! Oh, that's how you set off the police siren lights. Did I get a bonus for that? Oh, I never finished the race. <laughs> I feel like I could do this one better. Oh, goofy foot. All right. Stop. Oh, Lester. We don't benefit if we both fall down, buddy. Kicks me around my booty. Too early. I went too early. Alright, here we go. Ah, I got a good kick in. Oh, I ran into that. I just bounced on my wooden crate. Steel Rat and I did our share of skateboarding all over town, all over anywhere we could go. Uh, I had a couple other friends that enjoyed skateboarding and, uh, Steel Rat and uh, my buddy Andy and I, we, we definitely did our share of uh, skateboarding. Uh, we uh, also invented a sport where we would uh, pull one another behind a car on a skateboard, which was uh, fun until you blew out all your bearings. So that was kind of fun. Uh, I thought I beat him for a minute, but he got so many points from kicking me in the face. Oh, nope, that ain't, that's not gonna help. 
Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I got him! Punched him! Looks like a kidney shot! Oh look, I'm so far ahead! Am I gonna win? Did I win? Did I win? Come on! Why would I win? I'm gonna say I won. <laughs> I won. Uh, I remember when a, uh, so my friend Justin, uh, had another friend, uh, named, uh, Mark who went by Umbra Sprite and, uh, yeah, they might be related. There, there might be, uh, there's a relationship between the, between the jumping, uh, Umbra Sprite bought, this game and actually Umbra Sprite worked at an arcade, uh, a gold mine arcade that had 720. It was the first place I ever saw 720. And, uh, so we went to his house and that's where I got my copy of skate or die. Now, um, there was a copy utility called uh, fast hack -em. And Fast Hackem, basically what it would do would uh, make copies of games, but also it had this second thing called parameters. And so the way parameters worked was if a disc had a certain type of copy protection that involved um, a bad sector on a disc or something specific on a disc, something like that, the parameter would apply that to the disc after you copied it. So, uh, you know, you had to wait until the new version of fast hacking because it would have parameters and they would say like a hundred parameters or 500 parameters. And so there was a separate disc with all the parameters on it. And so what you would do is, um, uh, copy the game and then your copy would not work, but then you could go in and apply the parameter and it would patch it basically, uh, to make the game work. See if I remember how to do some moves here. So the key on doing, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, I knocked all my pads off. Okay, so the key to height is pressing the button in the darker gray area. So that's pumps when you're going up and down. And then when you're in the air, if you press left or right, you will rotate. But you also have to press the other way before coming down to stop. And you have to be lined up. Uh, straight up and down. So if you like, like stop there, <sighs> crashola. Uh, there's also, I think it's like a rock and roll kind of move here. I think you could do a, a little bit of a board slide. Uh, I don't remember if there's a ham plant in this one or not. Um, you can't land in the channel uh, over there where you drop in. You can't land in the channel or it would crash you. Uh, but you get 10 runs or 10 passes and then that's it. So it's it's whatever score you can get on that out of 10 runs. Now I think there's a... Yeah, there you go. There's a little board slide. So if you rotate like that... And then, so you press left or right to rotate, but also up or down then, you can move like 
like that. Oh, I thought it was good. And so the key uh, to get the most points on the left hand side over here is rotate while going down. Now if you hit on the very edge, which is what I did, if you hit at the very corner, you'll, you'll crash. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna go button, button, left, down, right, up. You can also do, um, I forgot what that's called, not a burial, but basically where you spin counterclockwise. Uh, so you spin like a backside air, you know, your back faces the air. But a frontside air is when you spin the opposite way like this. Like a little no hands thing, see that? That sometimes when he jumps, he holds up to the board. I remember thinking that was the funniest thing when his pads would fall off. Let me see if I can make this arm so stay up. Oh man, it's so hard to land in that little spot there. But it can be done. roll on the way back in. Thousand bonus points. Four thousand score is not very really good. I feel like I could probably get that by just going up and down like this. <laughs> no, maybe not. It's not oh, see, that was a big ollie. I, uh, th this is something, and it's not, I don't think it's covered in the, it's not, it's not in the Tony Hawk documentary, it's in the Bones Brigade documentary where they talk about the ollies, but there were, the guy that invented the Ollie is not, I mean, his nickname is literally Ollie, um, but it's not what you and I think of or modern skateboarders think of an Ollie. It was only done in ramps. So basically what an Ollie was, was when you uh, went off the top of a quarter pike like you got air. Nine ninety better. I bet I could beat five thousand. And uh, so that was the original uh, Ollie. It was not a uh, like a flatland Ollie. The flatland Ollie, as you might guess, was invented by Rodney Mullen. Uh, I believe Rodney Mullen. I have to look it up, but I believe he is credited with creating more than. Uh, hundred different uh, skateboarding tricks. A lot of them dumb. <laughs> Rodney Mullen did all kinds of goofy things. Uh, uh, Rodney Mullen was just on Tony Hawk's uh, podcast. And Rodney Mullen, the thing about uh, skateboarding is, you know, most of those guys, I mean, well, all those guys love skateboarding, right? Oh, look, 7750. We smashed the 5,000 mark, I said. Uh, all those guys love skateboarding, but uh, they also did it for money, right? And so when the money ran out, then most of them quit doing it, you know, but not the, not the elite guys and not the guys that just really loved the, the sport and, and, and thought of it as a, an art form and expression. And Rodney Mullen on that podcast basically revealed that he gets up, uh, he sleeps during the day and during the evening. And uh, I'm trying to remember if the jump involves uh, waggling the joystick, which I will not be able to do on this gamepad, or if it's just pumping. Um, yep, Burnquist is, um, I think, 
Uh, Lance Mountain is not doing competitions, but he's still skating. Uh, Tony Hawk, what he is doing now is uh, basically retiring moves. Uh, so Tony Hawk just retired the 900. So he basically set up a camera. He set up, he went to his warehouse. Uh, there's footage of it in the documentary. He pulls a 900 and then he says, that's it. I'm never doing another 900. Uh, he's just retiring. Okay. So I gotta remember, I know if you pop here. No, this is this joystick waggling, I believe. Oh, no, I remember what it was. It was down, and then up. Um, let me come to a stop here. I used to have a Bucky Lasik poster. I had a Neil Blender skateboard. That was my first uh, pro name. What did you do? I have to stop skating. Stop moving. Or it'll just be forever. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's got a... Well, does it ever time out? Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo style gamepad, which is what I'm playing with. I'm just gonna try to crash here. Yeah, this is. They probably all went home. And the thing is, I don't. I mean, I don't know how. You, I don't know. There's no way to. I could probably hit one stop if I knew. Well, that turns the music on and off. Okay, run stop will take me back. There we go. Commodore turns the music on and off. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah, it it was a good uh, it was a good documentary. But I feel like it just kind of brings closure. Uh, oh, anyway, I was talking about Rodney Mullen. Um, uh, and Rodney Mullen's a, a kooky dude. Uh, he he's out there, but um, just as honest as the day is long, you know? And he basically said, now the thing about the race is, uh, I know that I don't remember how the, the racetrack goes, but we'll, we'll try it here. Um, Rodney Mullen says he sleeps in the evening and night. And then he gets up in the middle of the night, like two in the morning and drives out to these sketchy areas of LA and goes to abandoned, or not abandoned, but uh, parking lots, like the Staples parking lot or Office Depot parking lot, like places where there are no cars, and sets up his portable boombox and skateboards in the middle of the night. I mean, this is a dude who is a millionaire, a multimillionaire who is retired from competition skateboard wear and just a guy who loves to skateboard. But as he says on the podcast, he can't go to a skate park when they're open because it's just a million people flooding around wanting to see Rodney Mullen skate, you know? And so, uh, so instead, oops, hold on. Let me swap discs here. Uh, so instead that's what he does is he goes out in the middle of the night and goes to parking lots. And he tells this whole story about, uh, at one point where he, uh, uh, gang members like roll up on him and, and, uh, you know, he thinks something bad's going to happen. He has a standoff with these, these guys that are, uh, just, you know, it seems like ba a bad situation, a situation you don't want to get in, but, uh, it's such a, I mean, you think about most professional athletes, like, uh, I mean, when a guy retires from the NBA, you don't imagine him going, getting up in the middle of the night and going to a park somewhere to shoot baskets by himself. Uh, but, uh, that's, that's Rodney Mullen. Uh, 
I could probably be nudging these load times along a little faster with uh, warping and stuff, but... Uh, okay, we definitely want Goofy Foot here. So the key to this one is, uh, of course, up speeds up. You, you've got to go through these slow flags and turn left and right. But see how slow uh, you turn? If you hold down the button, you spin like that. So it's like you could grind, uh, like go whoosh, like that. Now, I'm going very slow. Oops. I meant to jump over that. Uh, so let's put me over here. It's fine, it's fine. Oh. And then there's little, you can't go off the road at all. Like all those rocks and stuff will crash you. So like, oh, I didn't have enough speed to clear that. So you can duck, you can jump. So there are little things like, uh, that little thing right over there. If I'd have been paying attention, you could jump over that, but you gotta jump that great. So, I mean, I remember as a kid, it took me a long time to master a path that I could do quickly. Oh, that's a wrong time to jump. <laughs> Jumped into the flipper there. Oh, should jump that. This is literally a terrible run. So like you're going way over here and then way over there. Or you could just jump over that little edge area there. So I guess you gotta go through those flags. Okay, that's a terrible run. Alright, let's speed this up a little bit. going well. I've lost my skills, man. I used to be good at video games. Alright, there we go. Yeah, skateboard's like I do too, Steve. Not like how I used to, but that's probably how I do now. There's a funny story my wife likes to tell, and that uh, when my son uh, was of age and said, Hey, Dad, I think I'd like to get a skateboard. I guess I could have ducked under that second one. Alright, line it up. Duck. There we go. That worked. Alright, look at that. I'm cutting some off the time now. Uh, and so anyway, uh, we we went to the... When my son said he wanted a skateboard, uh, my wife was like, I think they have them at Walmart. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, no. My kid is not getting a Walmart skateboard. And so we went to... And I think uh, my son was like seven and we went to the skate shop and I was like this kid you know I was like we need some tracker trucks or some indies we need some slime balls on this thing maybe some fit you know and they're looking at me they're like yeah like they haven't made slime balls in 20 years sir and I'm like oh they called me sir it sucks I hate it and um then I was like he can have any deck he wants and he goes Oh, I want a Tony Hawk, which I don't, he wasn't a fan of Tony Hawk. I think Tony Hawk was just the only skateboarder he'd ever heard of, you know? And I was like, that's fine, whatever, you know? Like, I didn't have anything against Tony Hawk. I was just, oh, man, how's it going to put me over there? I didn't want to be over there. I want to work on that. Oh, I wish I hadn't been going so slow. 
Uh, and so anyway, then the guy was like, oh, uh, and can I get anything for you, sir? And I was like, yeah, maybe I want a skateboard too. And so I ended up buying a uh, Steve Caballero uh, old school style board, like a, a fishy tail, you know, um, a fishtail board with, um, I did get tracker trucks. And I didn't get slime balls, but I got, uh, uh, I think, indies, maybe indie wheels or something. But anyway, uh, come on, turn, you dummy. Oh my gosh, trucks are too tight, you can't turn. Oh, come on, that was gliding up. Alright, we're gonna jump over this thing. <laughs> we're not gonna, I'm just gonna fall every 10 feet. That'll be fun. So, anyway, I got this uh, Steve Caballero deck and I got everything and I brought it home, you know. And my wife is like, What are you doing? You're gonna fall on your face. You're gonna go to the hospital. And I was like, No, I'm not. And so I got it, you know. And uh, went out in the garage, and I got up on it, and I was, my wife came out, and I was like, you know, the thing is, I don't want to, I was like, I don't want to fall from this height. And she was like, you are literally two, two inches off the ground. Oh, no. Uh, I did regular foot. Uh, regular foot sucks. I skate goofy foot. And when I say skate, I mean... 25 to 30 years ago <laughs> last time I did any skating. And so, anyway, yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, I, I can't fall for this height. And so, of course, then my wife gives me a hard time about it, you know, like, every time, like, we go to the grocery store, and uh, you step off the curb, like, to go in, and she's like, careful, you don't want to fall from that height. <laughs> like, shut up. Oh, I turned the wrong way at the end because it's stupid regular foot instead of goofy foot. Seventy-nine twenty-five. All right. I don't know why. I'm... All right, here we go. This is it. This is the run. I had it. I just jumped too late. Line up for that. Line up for this. Do a little ollie off of that. Come over here. Oh, aimed right for that grill. Let's just hit everything at this point. You dummy. That's what I was trying to do before. Look, that's a better score than I got last time, too. 83. I don't know if that's my best. Okay, we're wasting time up here, Johnny Skater. This guy. I need some big. You know what I always wanted was one of those big old, um, like, street boards, you know? That looked like so much fun. But uh, they have to be closer to the ground than two inches where I'm not doing it. That's too hard to fall from. Are you kidding me? That was terrible. 6913. Um, well, I wouldn't say I was great at skateboarding. I just enjoyed it. But I enjoyed it. It was, uh. Oh, come on! I mean, when this guy says skate or die, he doesn't normally skate, <laughs> he just normally dies. Um,. 
I enjoyed skateboarding like I enjoyed uh, breakdancing, which is uh, like a lot of things in my life, like a lot of hobbies. I'm better than people that haven't tried it. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no surfboarding here, unfortunately. Although, Steel Rat and I did uh, go surfboarding one time. We rented surfboards and we went to the uh, surf mecca of Corpus Christi, which had waves in the two to four inch range, and basically paddled around on surfboards. Now, why that place decided to rent us surfboards, I'm not sure. I'm sure they didn't care. But. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That could just make me a thing from the yeah the roof of the building. And uh, Jeff and I actually uh, did a thing. We went to a uh, we stayed at a hotel and we did uh, pool tricks. I guess I'm going too fast through that, that section right there. Did some tricks uh, into a pool. Uh, which is a... Uh... Oh, man. Oh, this type of shot. Uh, so yeah, I was doing like 180 and 360s off this diamond board. And, and that seemed like a really fun thing to do. Uh, and then I found out what uh, water does to layered plywood and uh, what it does to metal uh, bearings. Okay, we're going to slow down. I did it. I did it. This is the run. <laughs> that was so close. Can't even get on it, so who cares? I think this is a minor threat. Is that who this is? TSOL? Uh, I did have a uh, skateboard one time that uh, it was a spare skateboard that I had, a crappy skateboard, and uh, I got a pair of shoes from my neighbor and I nailed the shoes to the skateboard. They were high top Nikes, uh, black and blue Nike high tops. And so uh, I could slip my feet into them without uh, having to lace them up. Cause that's what I was worried about was uh, if I fell that I would break my ankles or something. So uh, I would, I would get out there and then I could kind of, wiggle the the board back and forth you know and um uh but the cool thing was when cars would come by and i would just jump up in the air and do these tricks like just you know from a standing position just jump straight up and people would look like wow how did he do that well i nailed shoes to a board <laughs> okay let's let's see have we done everything i did the joust i did the race um, I did the jam, I did the jump, and I did the freestyle. Let's go back up here in the skate shop. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, um, we released Like a DOS, um, was that yesterday or today? I guess that was yesterday. The new episode of Like a Doss, uh, in which I covered um, Archon Ultra, which was the updated version of Archon released for Doss in 1994 by SSI. The original course was Electronic Arts. So if uh, you're into Archon, uh, you might want to go check that out. Let's see. Now, 
course, this stupid icon here says skate or die. And there were different things you could click on, like, uh, see, so you click on the joust, the bopper up here. It says, use the bopper in the pool joust. Someday you might be on a poster. Or maybe it's someday you might be on a poster. Don't you like my do? Obviously, this is uh, Lester's dad or Uncle Rodney, and uh, the face is obviously Rodney Dangerfield. Watch the corners in pool joust. Want to change board color? I forgot that you could do that. Oh, well, you have to sign up for the competition. I only keep the best high scores. You could click on this and it would show you the high scores. I'm pretty sure there's his tattoo said something. Simper fire die. <laughs> Guess his face doesn't say anything. And then you could go compete or go practice. I just like practicing because you could just pick any event that you want. We'll go do a little bit of freestyle before we get here. Now there was a skater die too, but not in the uh Yeah, exactly. That's like the uh the Michael Jackson, the lean shoes. Uh, there's a skater die too, but I not for the Commodore 64. I don't think it's for um, some of the 16 bit machines. There is a ski or die, which was not as popular. And of course, epics was well known for all their other uh, event style games. Oh, this is electron cards, but still. So if you can get into a rhythm on this side, clear that, and then on this side, use this. Oh man, dookie booty. But then just get in the rhythm on that side to always do that, that flip over the uh, channel. Spun the wrong way. 10,000 right off the bat. First one. Too far. One too far. Should have stopped. Should have stopped when I was ahead. Lost it. See, when you rotate out past that, there's no, you can't steer uh, once you're in the air. It's just one direction. So, like, when I press down, now I'm coming towards me, but I can't press forward and then come back the other way. So, if you, hey, see you, Adam. If you uh, rotate the wrong way or fly the wrong way or whatever, you're just, SOL, not TSOL, which was True sounds of liberty. Oh, I stayed up. I got hung up on the coping. Terrible tragedy. The daggers. The daggers threw daggers out there and they got me. Daggers. Come on, Corey Webster. Oh, that was a no-hander to a backside. Oh, I thought I bailed out of that. Should be that. Another 10,000 point run. Can't beat that. All right. Well, we had some fun. We did some skating. We, uh, we skated 
We skated or died. We skated and died. 